and there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Here is end time newsman, Rick Wiles. They said he would never win the primaries. They were wrong. They said he would never survive numerous controversies that erupted throughout the campaign. They were wrong. They said he would never win the Republican Party nomination. They were wrong. They said he would not receive more black and Latino votes than previous Republican presidential candidates. They were wrong. They said his supporters were mainly angry, uneducated white males. They were wrong. They said he would never defeat Hillary Clinton. They were wrong. The ruling class was wrong every time throughout the long, arduous campaign of 2016. A united establishment front that included key members of both political parties Hollywood celebrities, the news media, Wall Street barons, Silicon Valley billionaires, the FBI director, the attorney general, and top officials in the EU and UN repeatedly told the American middle class to sit down and shut up. The people responded by chanting, lock her up. We witnessed the making of history last night. Donald J. Trump, the man the establishment arrogantly said could not be elected president, defeated the most powerful and corrupt political machine in the history of America, the Clinton machine. Hillary Clinton thought she was entitled to the presidency. She saw herself as above the law and above everybody else. In her eyes, a public office is an opportunity to enrich yourself through corrupt means. She had gotten her way throughout her entire adult life. She had gotten away with criminal behavior for over three decades. She had escaped prosecution for a long list of crimes, including murder. Hillary Clinton is a pathological liar who has never been held accountable for her actions. The FBI director was afraid of her. The attorney general asked, how high? When Hillary Clinton said, jump. It came to an end last night at approximately 1.40 a.m. That's the time when the Associated Press declared Donald Trump had won the key battleground state of Pennsylvania. We waited and waited for the television news networks to say it. They held off for a long time. Trump supporters began to worry that the Clintons were busy working their magic in the wee hours of the morning by stuffing ballot boxes in Pennsylvania precincts. Finally, the news came that Mrs. Clinton had called Mr. Trump and conceded the election. The battle was over. The populist billionaire and his army of middle-class Americans had defeated the most powerful and corrupt political machine this country has ever experienced, the Clintons. FBI Director Comey refused to prosecute her, but the American people served a cease-and-desist order on Hillary Clinton last night. They told Bonnie and Clyde Clinton that the presidency of the United States of America is not for sale. It is off limits to their criminal operations. If you want to steal money, go someplace else and do it. Aside from the political aspects of Mr. Trump's spectacular victory over crooked Hillary, we must discern 
the spiritual aspects. Almighty God intervened in the affairs of this nation. He acted in response to the long-time dedicated opposition of devout Christian men and women to a dark and satanic political power network that had done great damage to the Republic and the culture and was using satanic power and the power of this nation to impose evil ways upon other smaller and weaker nations. For me, last night's victory was a welcomed and refreshing breeze from heaven after 18 long, difficult, and often lonely years to publicly expose and oppose the wicked network that was choking the life out of this nation. God used the toil, dedication, and prayers of devout Christians who refused to submit to the regime, and he used the network of alternative news organizations to chip away at the facade of the regime and expose its hideous and corrupt nature to millions of unsuspecting citizens. What happened last night was not the work of one person. It was the combined effort and prayers of countless people who resisted evil over many years. Weeks ago, America and Russia were on a fast track toward war. Tens of millions of people would die if such a war erupted. Satan's bloodlust for war has been averted. The plans of the global elite for perpetual war for monetary gain have been temporarily interrupted. As I said numerous times, Donald Trump is God's doorstop. He used the doorstop to block the door of judgment from tightly closing. It is not Donald Trump's responsibility to restore Christian morality in America. It is the sole responsibility of the Church of God. It appears that Mr. Trump will be a friend of the Church, not an adversary, so we have no excuse. The doorstop was inserted last night to block the door of judgment from sealing shut. It is now our responsibility as the body of Christ to push open the door and allow the light of God to shine in America again. Will Christians enjoy a momentary political victory and then go back to sleep? Or will Christians recognize that the judge of heaven and earth granted to us yesterday a divine reprieve from judgment for our grotesque sins? A Trump victory means nothing if there is no repentance in the land. Repentance follows sorrow for sin. Repentance produces a change in behavior and attitudes. Repentance requires action. God is not suggesting that we stop aborting millions of babies. He is demanding that we stop the slaughter of his children. God is not suggesting that the people stop watching pornography and vile movies. He is demanding purity. God is not suggesting that that people stop committing sexual sins. He is demanding it. What will be the response of the people? First, we must see what is the response of the Church of God. I believe God graciously granted America a reprieve from judgment. I do not think there will be another reprieve years from now. If we do not act decisively in the immediate future, to reintroduce Christian morality in this nation, at some point in the future, this reprieve will be revoked, and we will not have another chance. That is my opinion about what happened last night. Doc Burkhardt and Fior Hernandez are here in the studio with me. Edward Zoll is on his way home from New York City. I have a pre-recorded interview that I'm going to play in just a few minutes. I talked with Edward a few hours ago as he was preparing to board his flight back to Florida. But first, I want to ask Doc and Fior for their comments about what happened in the United States of America last night. 
Well, I'll defer to ladies first. I'd oh, like to hear you. Fior's you, uh, perspective on that. I appreciate that. that. I'd have to say that, um, Pastor, you, you hit it right um, exactly where it needs to, to be uh, with the reprieve. I believe the reprieve has been granted. The question is, what are we going to do with it and about it as the body of Christ and as the church? I'm very excited for the future of the body of Christ, for the future of America. Very hopeful. I have to say, though, that even last night throughout the process, what I just I just kept praying and talking to the Lord. And we need to be very mindful and very careful. We, we cannot cease prayer. We're supposed to be praying without ceasing. And it is very important for us to pray for him and cover him in prayer right now and the country as a whole. We see a lot of things that are trying to rise up that are not good. We're seeing a lot of talks about racism and a lot of uh, people talking about revolting in not very good ways, um, violence erupting and and just uh, hate rising in a way that we as the body of Christ have a dominion in the name of Jesus to to call down uh, the same way that we did against the forces that were trying to just rig the system for a lack of a better term. Um, I have to also say that we need to be careful as the body of Christ to not allow pride or complacency, one extreme or the other, to creep into our lives. We must accept this victory with humility, if that makes sense, um, and, and say we are now going to continue to carry the torch and continue to gain territory that God has given us uh, for the kingdom. Your, what were your thoughts about Donald Trump's victory speech last night? Uh, my, it's my understanding he had not written anything. He, he walked out on the stage right after Mrs. Clinton called him, and he spoke from his heart. Yes, and I have to say that I didn't see that it was rehearsed at all. I, I thought it to be very, um, very natural coming to him. And I have to say, again, I don't have as much experience as you guys do with elections. <laughs> I haven't been around as long as you have. But in my experience, I have to say I've never seen a, a speech like that, a victory speech like that. I did see, I was able to discern, that is really the word I want to use, um, humility. And I, I never saw a, a, a candidate delivering a victory speech that called other people to his side and, and to speak and started asking mm. for, where, where's so-and-so, where's Ben Carson? Oh, you know, asking, he asked, he was calling on pants and just... I never, I've never seen that. If if you've seen it and and I and you can share that with me, but that impacted me and and some of my colleagues. Yeah, I think it had a very calming effect on the people who watched it. Yes, you know, typically a a, a victorious candidate is uh, boasting of their victory and whipping up the enthusiasm of of their supporters, and they're gloating in the glory of the moment. But Donald Trump, to me, it looked like he was on the verge of tears when he walked on the stage. Yes. I think he right. was choke, holding back tears. Yes. And he looked very humble. And there was a photograph that I saw last night that I shared with the staff today. A, a photograph of him standing on the stage. And when I enlarged the photograph and looked at his eyes, I saw a very humbled man. I saw a man who was standing on a stage, tired, weary, a warrior, a Samson that had fought with all of his might, had been beaten, attacked, bloodied and bruised. And he was standing there upright, strong, and yet bowed in humility and aware that something monumental had happened yes. beyond his ability to make it happen. And Mr. Trump isn't known for displays of humility. He's known for displays of boasting and, and everything. And that's, in fact, that seems to be some of his appeal. Uh, he puts himself out there. He says, I'm a winner. I like to win. We can build. We can make. Uh, we uh, Make America great again. I mean, those are very, you know, forthright, boastful comments. And yet here he was humbled as a candidate, realizing, hey, something momentous is happening here. 